a London rivalry to savour and the jump season's jewel in the crown. Just two of the many things we'll be covering on this week's Sports Spread. It's a crowded field on the guest front too. Over at the London Stock Exchange, we've got William Hill's Joe Crilly at our offices in the city, Reuters football editor Mike Collett and here in the studio Alan Alger from Blue Square. Gents, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Let's start with you, Mike. Uh, Arsenal-Tottenham then. Could be an exciting game, both teams scoring freely but also shipping plenty of goals. Team selection key, do you think? I think this game, Arsenal-Spurs, is one of the games of the season. And the last two seasons at high, at, uh, the Emirates have been outstanding. Um, Spurs won their 3-2 two, two years ago, Arsenal won 5-2. Last season, both games similar in the winning team came back from two goals down. They often say, you know, that form goes out the window in local derbies. Um, the thing is about Arsenal and Spurs right now is there is no form really uh, with either team playing well. I think that um, it's a very hard one to call, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that Spurs are going to win this. OK, uh, let's bring in uh, Alan here in the studio. This fixture seems to have uh, plenty of draws in the Premier League uh, than any other. Where's the value in the odds here? I'm not so sure. Um, I'm an Arsenal fan. I speak to Tottenham fans and they say to me, oh, you'll definitely beat us at the weekend. You know, we're awful at the moment. And uh, I say, well, have you seen us? Because we've had the first, uh, you know, the worst start in 17 years. So actually, I think the prices are about right. Arsenal, obviously, favourites at home. But it's interesting that in this fixture, the Arsenal price just keeps hitting bigger and bigger season after season. And it's just this, this year... Um, that Tottenham haven't actually kicked on in the way we'd have expected. So that price has come back in and Arsenal now odds on at 10 to 11. But um, that game last year, when, when Tottenham raced into that 2-0 lead, I think everybody thought it was over for Arsene Wenger, for Arsenal, and mm -hmm. uh, managed to cling on to that qualify for the Champions League and everything was rosy again until the start of this season when it's come again. So it's another defining game for Arsenal and they're odds on favourites to win it. But I don't think many punters looking at this game outside of the fact it's a North London derby will want to trust Arsenal at odds on. And I think that's the key thing here. OK, well, let's bring Joe down at the, uh, the LSC. Uh, 23 goals between these two in the last four league games at the Emirates. A high scoring game worth a bet or what about goal scorers, for example? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, uh, I've written down on my piece of paper here, I, I'm sitting firmly on the fence. I'm going to have to agree with Alan that form does go out of the window, but uh, with no team having any discernible form whatsoever, it, it does look like a draw is the most likely outcome at 12 to 5. Um, I've written down 2 all, 14 to 1, and 3 all, 50 to 1 might be worth a punt as well. And the first goal scorers, they aren't tempting me either. Um, I mean, you've got Adebayor, Gareth Bale, Jermaine Defoe. You don't know who's going to play, you don't know who's going to be starting. That's for Spurs. And Giroud and Podolski haven't really uh, impressed me that much since moving to Arsenal over the summer. OK, uh, Mike, let's move on to the, uh, the other top of the table clash. I'm still struggling with this one, being a, a baggy supporter. West Brom, uh, Chelsea. Um, lots of interesting things here. Roberto Di Matteo, obviously a former baggy's boss, and Steve Clark, former uh, Chelsea player and assistant manager. And also Lukaku uh, on loan at the, the Hawthorns. Uh, how do you see this one uh, going on? Chelsea, you know, there's something about the top four teams and they seem to do it week in, week out. It's as if at 85 minutes, when the other team is settling for a draw or almost easing off, those top four teams kick into gear. We've seen it time and time again, the Premier League and the Champions League. Manchester City did it to Spurs last week. Mm. Chelsea did it against Shakhtar Donetsk. And I think that that is really what goes on at the moment is... Um, the fact that these clubs just have something extra uh, about them and possibly uh, Chelsea will sneak this one. OK, let's get back to Alan here in the studio. West Brom, they don't have a great record against uh, Chelsea, but they are experiencing that sort of... Uh, Chelsea are themselves uh, getting this uh, pre-Christmas slump that they've had a couple of times. Uh, I can't, I can't really think about sort of fortress Hawthorns, can I? It doesn't work that way. Maybe not, but um, <laughs> I, I think you saw that stat on the screen then, not, yeah. not conceded a goal in the first 30 minutes of games. And obviously that they are very, you know, the, the defence is shored up early on. Mm. You, say, you say a slump, for, for a pre-Christmas slump for Chelsea, but I think any team involved in the Champions League often experiences a bad November just because there's so many games that are coming thick and fast. You have that double header against maybe the your group's rivals like Arsenal experienced against Schalke. So it's very difficult to keep going week after the week you're, you're playing every three days so that's the difference for these clubs and you know Chelsea are the favourites for the game as you'd expect they're 10 to 11 for the game but um, I mean just looking at it here I think that punters will go for a draw here and I think they'll go for a low scoring draw maybe no goal scorer at 10 to 1. OK, Joe, uh, for all the excitement of Chelsea's uh, midfield uh, uh, trio of Hazard, Mata and Oscar, seven of their goals have come from defenders this season. I mean how, how do you bet on this one from your end? 
Well, I mean, the, the first scorer's mark, it's always an interesting one. And I always do tip people to go for the, uh, the defenders uh, because, obviously, with set pieces playing such a big part in the modern game, you can always get somebody like Gary Cahill, who's fantastic at scoring goals. Uh, he scored uh, seven or eight a season when he was at Bolton Wanderers. Uh, and he's usually available for around 16 to 1 to score the first goal of the, of the game. I, th I, think, um, I think Alan, again, has got it spot on. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game, especially without uh, Lukaku playing for... Uh, for West Brom, uh, Torres is the uh, the five to two favourite mm. to open the scoring, obviously. But I mean, you, you can take your pick. I mean, Mata, Hazard, Lampard—they're all around the eight to one, nine to one mark to score the first goal as well. And I'm sure they'll tempt a few punters. Okay, I'm trying to get some dissent here. If I can get some, let's stay with you, Joe. Looking down at the the other fixtures uh, fixtures of the weekend, where, where do you see value for the for the punters? Well, I mean, I'm going to go to Norwich, Manchester United. Um, I don't particularly see any value in the uh, in the outright market. Manchester United, two to five favourites to win the game, uh, and they probably will do with relative ease. But with uh, Manchester United's recent propensity for give, giving goals away and then coming back to win the game, uh, it's actually six to one for that to happen in this game. And I think that might be tempting a few punters, uh, given United's recent form. OK, uh, Alan... Uh Take your pick of the rest of the fixtures. Where would you get, get or make your money during this weekend? Well, one of the best back teams of last week was actually QPR. They were playing away at Stoke, and everybody thought they'd get their first win of the season. They were 7-2 to two in uh, the midweek leading up to that. And everyone, everyone was backing them, saying, oh, they're going to get their first win this weekend. Stoke haven't been very good this season. And uh, obviously, we know what happened there. That they, they didn't win the game. They were backed into 3-1 to one to do so. So now they're odds on at home against uh, Southampton. I think punters will pile in again. And uh, obviously, lesser opposition. They are, they are at home now and sometimes in betting it's, it's worth going against the crowd but I think the crowd will all be with QPR here. OK, uh, finally let's get on to horse racing's uh, jump season coming to a close at uh, Cheltenham. Let's get back to you Joe, who's looking good for the, for the Gold Cup then? Uh, well, we've got Grand Cru and, uh, and Hunt Ball. There are uh, two favourites, and I think they're going to be the two popular choices as well with punters. Uh, David Pipe, obviously, training uh, Grand Cru. Uh, nine to four. They've got such a legacy, the Pipe family, in this race. I think they've, they've won nine times in this particular race, so I think there'll be a few people backing them uh, to do it a tenth time with Grand Cru. And uh, Hunt Ball, I think he's uh, like a neutral uh, favourite. The, uh, the owner, Anthony Knott, he's, uh, he's a lovable character. Uh, he, he famously got fined for riding on the back of his horse into the winner's circle earlier this year. And I think there's a lot of people who, who like that horse, particularly because of the owner. And I think he'll be well backed as well at five to one. OK, so a lovable rogue there. Uh, Alan, do you agree with those? We could find us some, uh, some other winning bets there. Well, this, this signals the start of the jump season. And it's uh, this Gold Cup um, is... is you know, it's, it's one that trainers target, and they target them with well-handicapped horses. And actually, the last five seasons, we've seen horses carrying less than 11 stone win this. The average price has been about 12 to 1. You need to look for a horse that's 6, 7 or 8 years old. The last nine winners all fell into that category. So you need to look for a low weight as well. I think J.P. McManus's Nadia de la Vega at 14 to 1 could be a good bet here. Grand Cru at 9 to 4 and Hump Ball at 5 to 1. I couldn't touch either of those at the prices. I think uh, Alpha Rob has probably got too much weight according to the stats. So I think there could be some good each way value if you look for the bigger priced horses here. OK, gents, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, Mike and I will be uh, taking note of that uh, for our flutter at the weekend. That is it for another week. My thanks to Joe Crilly of William Hill, Reuters Mike Collett and Alan Alger of Blue Square. Sports Spread returns next week with the end of the Formula One season, plus the big game in the Premier League, Chelsea versus Man City. I'm Nigel Stevenson. This is Reuters.